I would like to apologize for wearing a poncho in today's video for anyone out there who cares about fashion, but this is a fleece poncho and I'm so warm and given that it's now officially spring in Australia, it has done nothing but rain. So I'm cold and I shall wear my poncho for the entire video. Hi guys, my name is Kirsty and welcome to Upside Down Books. I'm back to do my wrap up. Don't know what that was, let's not do that again. Firstly, apologies for skipping a skipping a week. I didn't film last week, I didn't have a video for you guys last week. Many sorries. I was sick with a throat thing, which meant I couldn't talk, so I therefore couldn't make a video, so that's why I wasn't here last week. But I'm back now so we can all breathe a sigh of relief. I have both my book haul and my wrap up to do in this one video today which is very exciting although slightly less exciting because I realised that I bought next to no books in August which probably explains why for like the first time in a million years my TBR count has actually gone down. It's incredible. It's gone down from like 250 at the start of the year to like I think I'm on 235 or so right now and it's mind blowing but that's for the second half of the video. Let's start today with discussing what books I did read in August. August was sort of depressingly not the fast reading month I thought it was going to be. Having come off the back of the month long readathon in July and sort of petering out into the ground for that one, I, I had expectations that with my new freedom to do whatever I wanted in August I would read so much. And I, and I didn't. This is partly because I read a book that I did. In fact, I did enough two books in August, it was crazy. But I ended up reading six, which isn't the end of the world, but I guess I was just still wading through trying to find some motivation. And I did find it. I tell you, I recently discovered the key to my heart with my Instagram pictures, if that's the right expression. Does that make any sense? Probably not. I, I rejigged my photos and it's it's made me inspired to take Instagram photos, to write more blog posts, to film. Like, I just, it's like the floodgates has been opened. Anyway, we're waffling big time. I have three physical books and three non-physical books to show you for what I read in August. Overall they were pr pretty decent, pretty decent month, pretty happy with the books I read but this coming month in September I'm trying to like rehash my passion. The first book that I finished in August was Uprooted by Naomi Novik and at this point I think I probably finished that the first week in or so and I just kind of hadn't got anywhere because of a book I DNF'd. That book was The Honourable Thief by M Megan Wilson and Anastasios. I got about 30% of the way through and I decided that no, one of my goals for the year was to put down any books that I was not thoroughly enjoying and move on to the stuff that I do love. And I actually for once took my advice and I feel as happy as a butterfly knowing that I can just stop reading a book I'm not loving and move on. I did feel bad, this wasn't ARC, it was sent to me by Pam McMillan, so I appreciate that but it wasn't my book. I'm not going to talk about it but I do have a full DNF review up on my blog which you can go check out if you want to. Back to Uprooted. Uprooted I listened to on the audiobook which was really great, the story was interesting, it was not at all what I thought it was going to be because I don't think I've ever actually read the blurb. I ended up rating it a 4 out of 5 stars and I am very much so encouraged to read more of Novik's books now. The story takes place in a fantastical world where the forest is evil and encroaching on towns and villages and there's a sorcerer called the dragon who takes one girl every 10 years into his tower and she's never seen until she emerges and then she always leaves the village. That's sort of the creepy pro plot line you're given and there's a lot of intricacies to it and some really cool magic and a really great character in it, really good storyline. Highly recommend this one. I have a full video review up for this one as well. I'll put a little card up there so you can go and click onto that one if you want to hear my review. The second book that I finished was A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Mass. I really surprised myself by actually picking this one up. It's been on my shelf since I had it pre-ordered and it came out so a little while now and I've heard very average things about it so I wasn't particularly inspired to read it. It was really nice to dive back into this world with Feyre and Reese and all of the crew and it was a cute story but it didn't really have, I don't know, much purpose and I wouldn't say it quite lived up to its purpose of being a book to tie over the series because this is literally a story about Feyre not knowing what to get Reese and a present for the winter solstice and vice versa. It was very flopsy mopsy on its purpose for existing but I did enjoy going back into it but I did also only give it three out of five stars and I'm slightly nervous because on Goodreads it is number 3.1 in the series which makes me think we might get a few other novellas before she continues it on 
and I just, I don't know. I don't know, this series crescendoed and then the last couple of books have been a bit on the edge of where it's actually going to end up going. The next book that I read was another audiobook and it was Ivan the Terrible by In60 Learning. I have read one of their books before for review and this again was for review. I've got three more of their audiobooks on different historical topics to listen to. These audiobooks are just one hour long, 60 minutes, and you get a really good concise summary of the history that you've chosen to listen to. They're really cheap, so they're super affordable audiobooks to get, and I really am enjoying them so much. So I was so excited when they reached out again and asked if I wanted to read more because they said, duh, of course I do. I will be running a giveaway for someone to win five of free audiobooks from them, so make sure that you keep an eye out for that. That should hopefully be happening soon. I'll be doing one for each review that I do. So three giveaways, three people, 15 books. Capish? I ended up rating this one a 4 out of 5 stars and yeah, it was just really good. I liked learning about it, I know a bit more about Ivan the Terrible now and I'm pretty happy at filling in some of my Russian history. Having been on a bit of a, an historical plight at this point, I then picked up The Complete Collection of Mouse by Art Spiegelman and this has been sitting on my bookshelf ominously watching me for the last few months and I've been meaning to pick it up but for whatever reason it just looked really dense for um, a graphic novel and I was, I guess, intimidated to pick it up. This book touched my soul. It is by far my favourite, my favourite graphic novel, this is including Saga, that I've ever read and I've read a few now. I thoroughly enjoyed this. This was such an enjoyable and emotional way of portraying someone's experience of going through World War II as a Jew in Poland and ending up in places such as Auschwitz. So I highly recommend this one, like I cannot recommend it enough. It is well worth the money that you pay for it. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not even too pricey on the book depository, but I literally cannot recommend this enough. It's really funny, um, even though it's really serious, the entire thing is in black and white, and they're all depicted as animals. So it's just, it's just really good. It's really good, really, really good. That meant that, of course, I rated this one a 5 out of 5 stars. I just, I will sing its praises forever. The next book that I read was also an audiobook, and that was Dragonfly and Amber by Diana Gabaldon, which is book 2 in the Outlander series, and holy dolly, I love this series so much. The audiobook for number 2 is really long, it sits at about 40 hours and from here on in the series it just gets longer so they are quite the commitment but I have a good opportunity throughout the week to sit down on several days and listen to it whilst I work so I can just power through and the obsession has sunk in. I obviously rated this one a 5 out of 5 stars as well. It didn't make my all-time favourite lists. I've got to I've got to pace myself with these. They can't all be on my all-time favourites. But yes, Outlander is an amazing series. So many things happened that I wasn't expecting. I had no idea with time differences that we get in this book that that was going to happen because I never read blurbs and I probably should. But this was incredible. I cannot wait to see how they portray it in the TV series. I'm going to start watching that soon and obviously I'm going to continue the series with Voyager, which seems to be a popular favourite among everyone, so I am so excited to see where the story is going to progress from here. That means that the last book that I read in August was The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. This was the beginning of me telling myself that I was going to read some books I enjoyed. I think I flopped between saying I want to read this book that's been on my shelf for ages and I need to read this book because it's an arc and then you get stuck in a cycle of not really reading anything that you're truly passionate about. So I went, enough is enough. I filmed the Mamma Mia book tag a couple of weeks ago and one of the questions was, what's a book you know you're gonna love? And I picked this one and then I thought, that's so silly, why don't I just read it then? And it, guess what? It ended up being a five star read. I enjoyed it enough that I even briefly considered putting it on my all time favorites list. Holly Black is literally the queen of fairies. She's written another series before that involves paranormal fae and it's brilliant and I just, I can't, I can't get over how much I enjoy her storylines. This one has got a lot of a twisted element going on with two human mortals and their half fae sister being brought into the fairy world after the stepfather, the father of the fae sister, murders their parents and they are brought up like gentry in the fae world but not accepted because they are mortals and the main character Jude strives to do everything she can to be worse than the fae, better than them and more powerful and it's just I bloody love it and it had a fantastic plot twist in it so I highly recommend this one. I was sent this to me by Alan and Unwin with the imprint of Hockey Books and I thank you so much for sending me this. I, I, it is obviously I'm a little late in doing my review for it. My review is up on my blog if you want to go and read my full thoughts and digest of how it all went down but I did finally get around to it. Thank god. So cheers to the start of a new reading regime where I read what I enjoy.
on a side mention of the second book that I DNF'd this month was Dragon Champion by E.E. E. Knight. This little tiny tray paperback I had, I bought on a whim because it had Dragon on it and I did get halfway through. I didn't hate the book and I would like to try rereading it one day but it's a very blah, 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 sort of read. I couldn't understand half of the names and it was very boring in all honesty so if you could accept it was boring and push through the story was okay. It doesn't make any sense but that's beside the point because the fact was I'd had it on my currently reading shelf for like three months and hadn't touched it so I said enough is enough I'm gonna stop stressing about it and I put it down with maybe the intention of one day returning to it. So now we're going to quickly move on to my book haul for August which consists of a whopping total of two books. I literally could not believe that I only bought two books but then I did believe it because I recall that recently I've sort of been on a bit of a buying spree because clearly I've not received enough books to satisfy my bookish needs. So September will be a probably very different story. I didn't receive any books this month from publishers so it's given me a nice reprieve to try and catch up on my TBR which I I've been doing and I'm so excited about but I did jump onto the internet in a brief moment of crumbling resolve and I bought Days of Blood and Starlight by Lane Taylor which is the sequel to Daughter of Smoke and Bone. It kind of annoys me that the covers don't look like they match but they do match on the shelf and that's very satisfying. And the second book that I got was with my Audible subscription and that was Life on Air by David Attenborough which I'm currently listening to and I am loving it so much. It is beautiful and I love David Attenborough. I love listening to audiobooks of people's memoirs that I admire and this is the second one I've done on audiobook but third memoir I've read and I yeah I'm really enjoying it. This is super entertaining. I highly recommend getting the- I highly recommend guys. Highly, highly recommend getting the audiobook version of this so you can listen to Attenborough telling his own anecdotes about his life. It is incredible. But that is all I have for you today so I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm looking forward to do my wrap up in September because I am sure I will have a deliciously big book haul for you then. But other than that I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye. Uh,